Hey, what's up, my Acer Army? Gamer Guy 7 Ace is back with more LEGO Harry Potter, and today I'm doing LEGO Harry Potter years 5 to 7. Alright, let us begin. So, on previous episode, I finished years 1 to 4, so right now I'm going to do years 5 to 7, starting with year 5, Order of the Phoenix. So, hope you guys support this video. Uh, smash like button, let's see if we can get 15 likes on this video. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to, I'm doing the same format I did before, you know, I'm going to be doing long plays, I'm going to do long play of Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2. Now, Order of the Phoenix is pretty damn long. I mean, like, this game is about, like, I don't even know how to say it. It's like, like, this episode alone is over two hours. So, but I still included it, even though I wanted to do less than two hours, because by two hours, it's practically almost over, so, yeah. And that awesome new theme song in Harry Potter and Order of the Phoenix. The music in this game is definitely a lot darker than the previous game. You know, I've been wanting to play this. This is the game, the first game that I did on my channel, but it was the handheld version. I did Lego Harry Potter 5 to 7 on the PlayStation Portable. So right now it feels like I'm going completely full circle doing this on the console version. So yeah, you know, a lot of people, well not a lot, but a few people have asked me if I can, you know, make it, uh, I don't know how to say it, if I can, oh yeah, if I can do a new walkthrough on the PSP version, you know, because I did crappy camera on that one, and I don't know, I, I don't want to, you know, because I got a lot of views on those, and I know if I do it again, I won't get enough views, so you guys will just have to deal with that crappy camera quality, you know? <laughs> Must have been the Dementors, but I love this scene in the movie. So we're now doing Order of the Phoenix. And alright guys, question of the day. Who is your favorite director in the Harry Potter series? Now we have four directors. Chris Columbus, who did the first two movies. Alfonso Cuaron, who did the third movie. Mike Newell, who did the fourth movie. And David Yates, who did the final four movies from movie five to movie eight. As for me, my favorite director is hands down David Yates. Followed by mm, Mike Newell as a director. You know? I do appreciate what Alfonso Cuaron did, but I think Persian Rescue is definitely a rated film to me, you know? And plus, I just like Mike Newell. I know Mike Newell, he did a lot of things that might have been out of character, like with Dumbledore or whatever. But one thing I like about Mike Newell, he brought the best performance out of the characters. He, he like, like people say, oh, Alfonso Cuaron, like, Alfonso Cuaron was more on just, you know, the artsy look and everything. I mean, yes, he he made the actors, you know, improve, but Mike Newell is really the one who made them start acting real good. Because some of the acting from Harry or Hermione or whatever, or Ron, or especially Harry in the third movie, was a little cringeworthy. Like that one scene where he's like, I hope he finds me. Because when he does, I'm going to be ready. When he does, I'm going to kill him. Like that one was like, oh, okay. I mean, at the time, it was like, damn. But when I watched that again, it's like, oh, man. So Mike Newell is definitely my, my second favorite. <laughs> Alright, find the Dementors now, but this is kind of weird because you kind of have to let the Dementors attack you. So right now I'm installing time because this has to go according to plan as the movie. So I have to let them attack you. Well, all right, attack me then. Dementor, attack me.
Alright, flying through the six, or actually flying through the, what do you call this, the London River? The Thames? I don't know. But yeah, this was cool. I like it that this is 3D, you know. Um, yeah, this is an epic or awesome scene in Order of the Phoenix. Like, like this is basically the last happy moment in that movie. Like, when people try to say, oh god, the rest of the movies are depressing. There's some awesome moments. But nah, you book Pierce would be too busy complaining, saying, this is not in the books. In the books, the wizards were flying in the sky, in the clouds. It's like, come on, guys. Like, haven't you heard of, you know, um, like, in, okay, in Prison of Azkaban, when Harry was like, wait, but the muggles, can't they see us when he was in the night bus? And then the guy was like, muggles, they don't see nothing, do they? And then, uh, obviously, they're using an invisible spell or whatever that muggles can't see them. I mean, come on. All right, time for some Kingsley Shacklebolt time. Yeah, Kingsley Shacklebolt is definitely one of my favorite wizards. I mean, I mean, sure he didn't get much, uh, you know, he, he didn't get much screen time in the movies, but what he did get, I liked it, you know. Like uh, he was very important in the movies, you know, shown as a member of the Order of the Phoenix. I really liked him. He worked in the Ministry, and he became the minister after the uh, after Voldemort was defeated, you know. But in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I think it's Hermione that's the minister now. Well, whatever. So, uh, yeah, but I just like him. And uh, right now, we can't really use uh, the wizard's different magic abilities. I know, like, okay, even though Harry's in his fifth year, he can, he pretty much has all the spells he learned previously down. But, you know, just for the movie to give a little more challenge, you're not able to use all your magic until you begin your year at Hogwarts. You know, so you got only got to use what you have to use. So, yeah. Alright, gotta shave down the street to rescue all the Order members. Alright, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Kizzy Shackle, I just love his attire. It's so cool. You know, um... In the books, uh, Kizzy Shackle was just, you know, described as this black, bald wizard with an earring in his ear and had a cloak. But the movies r really gave him, you know, like, they, they made his attire look very African, which I liked it. African wizard, you know? Which, in my opinion, is awesome. I like it when, when the different ethnicities of wizards and witches, they they wear clothes reflecting on their culture, you know? Because, I mean, I liked it. Because I don't want Kizzy Chocobot looking like uh, any other, you know, wizard. I, I want him looking like his own, and he's the most unique. I wish he parts, but, oh well. He was a bit older in the movie than I thought he'd be, though, to be honest, you know? He's actually Jamaican. Uh, he's Jamaican-British. You know, I saw a, a, a little short film with him in it. But, uh, yeah, it's cool. All right, now we're in the Ministry of Magic, because Harry's got to go to his hearing for performing magic illegally, even though he was using it to save his freaking cousin, Dudley. But yeah, another differentiation from the movies and the books, you know, like, 
But I like this. This is one of the changes I liked. In the book, when, when Dudley was with Harry and his friends, stuff, Harry was just picking on him relentlessly, which was fun to read because the, only because we've gotten a lot of exposition and stories in the books, details of Dudley picking on Harry. So having Harry pick on Dudley and using his magic as advantage was uh, as a threat was definitely rewarding. But the movie, for example, we haven't seen much of Dudley actually picking on Harry. So to have Harry picking on Dudley in the movie would be kind of cruel. So to have Dudley actually messing with Harry with his friends and bullying him, I like that better. Like I said, you can the movies and the books are not always the same. I liked it that he was picking on Harry and then Harry brought out his wand and of course his friends thought it was a joke, but, but Dudley knew what was up, you know, he knew what's up. But yeah, alright, gotta... I'm trying my best to speedrun this and I still complete this in two hours. I think these, I think this game, uh, the levels will be, the years will definitely be a lot longer in my opinion, you know, so yeah. Just gotta get to the gate. That's the elevator room, so you gotta get to there. But it's cool, man, how they designed this, but this is basically... From the movies, taken from the movies, and how J.K. Rowling wanted things to look like, you know? So it's really cool. Ministry Magic did not look how I expected it to look. It looks very good, like with the Victorian or the Kenshin, I don't know, the bricks. It's awesome. And uh, we've seen glimpses of the American Ministry in uh, Fantastic Beasts. I'm, I can't wait to see how that's going to look. You know, I'm glad David Yates is directing these movies. It's going to be very consistent. And the Harry Potter movies have been super consistent since the fifth movie, you know, and I appreciate that. You know, I really like that. So, all right, you need to know, I mean, you need to know dark magic to use dark magical objects. So, all right, let's see something. Oh, I don't think this thing is going to load anytime soon. Dang. Oh, well. All right, completed the level. And nice, look at the background with the nice day, daytime. That's the brightest we've ever seen. And obviously the victory music, the, the, the level completion music is not the Quidditch music anymore. It's that a uh, Flight of the Order of the Phoenix. It's funny though, cause they kinda didn't have many options of happy victory music to use from the later Harry Potter movies. Cause the music, the soundtrack is so dark. All right. Just gonna let you guys hear it a bit. All right, we are in Diagon Alley, and this definitely looks different. Diagon Alley is definitely a little bit more shorter. More things are closed and boarded up. Weasley's Wizard Weezes is not open, of course, because Fred and George Weasley are still in Hogwarts. They haven't built it yet. All right, okay, we're in Leaky Cauldron. Now let's go on to London. Now, now you guys will get to see how big these worlds are. I mean, they're they're not bigger than the Lego games today, but at the time this came out, 2011, it was pretty big. Because now we're in London, you can actually explore London. 
obviously those gates uh they they block you from moving any further they're like the invisible walls you know but let's go down the uh subway station so we can go to platform nine and three quarters or actually we can go to king's cross you have nice rock music all right let's go down here Man, I can't believe back then though I thought the worlds here were so huge after playing the Lego games of today you know like Star Wars especially uh, Lego dimensions these worlds are nothing I can complete all these in a day you know all right we need our ticket so we can board all aboard the Hogwarts Express all right, let's take the train Ah, poor Hogwarts student in peril. Sorry you missed the train, fam. I'm not gonna help you get down, I'm speed running. All right, so right now we're in Hogwarts. And also, one thing I like about this Hogwarts is much bigger, at least outside is. You see more of the world outside of Hogwarts, so I like that. I really appreciate that. And I'm with Luna. And this is where the game glitches. Yeah, this game has been glitching a lot for me lately. Years 5 to 7, so you're actually seeing me upload another video now because the first one glitched for me. For some odd reason. I don't know why I did that, but oh well. So, but alright, playing as Luna Lovegood. Makes first appearance in the game. Dang, motorcycle man, these motorcycles in their huge ass mufflers. But all right. So playing as Luna, uh, yeah, and uh, man, see that's one thing I hate about you know keeping the windows rolled down. But oh well, the struggle, man, the struggle. Can't wait until it gets warmer. Uh, yeah, until it gets cooler, actually. Okay, I need to get passed through, but, uh, yeah, I kind of forgot what to do. You need the wheels to fix on the Thestral gate, uh, the Thestral carriage, so the Thestrals can take you out. Now, the game doesn't explain that only people who have seen death, experienced death, can see Thestrals. But it still shows Ron and Hermione not being able to see them. So, yeah, that's why I'm glad they added dialogue in LEGO games. I don't care what some of you LEGO purists think. Lego games need dialogue because just something like that you can't really explain. Yeah, like, like how can you explain that through miming and body language, you know? Of course, the Harry Potter fans, people who read the books and watched the movies will understand. Yeah. Well, Alright. It's got to find the other wheel. It's definitely down here. It's on the other side. And I just passed it. What is wrong with me, fam? What is wrong with me? Uh, Alright, let's get that one. Come on, get that wheel. Alright, nice. Now this needs to be proper. Alright, Luna. You know, but who else here thought that Harry and Luna were going to get it on in the movies? Because I really thought they could have a relationship. I mean, I know in the books, actually, Harry was very annoyed of Luna. Like, Harry didn't warm up to Luna until much later in the book. He just thought of her as a nuisance. They kind of related, but not quite. And the movies, though, they were, like, really close. Like, even uh, Dan Ratcliffe thought, he, like, like even he shipped Harry and Luna hard. I Like, like, like the chemistry was just real, you know? 
It, it, it was definitely real, but oh well. Now that's the movies. Like I said, what's in the book doesn't always work out in the movies, and you can't fault the director. It's all about chemistry, you know? We're talking about human beings here with, you know, different chemical balances and hormones and emotions. I mean, Dan Radcliffe isn't going to be the exact Harry Potter on the inside. He may look like it, but he he's not Harry Potter on the inside. So to have him... To, to make him have chemistry with Ginny, who he's basically grown up with, is like a sister to him since the first movie, it's just not going to work well. Especially that the fact that we all didn't know how the book was going to end. Maybe if we did, they would have, the, the directors would have had hindsight. But still, you know, I mean foresight. They would have had foresight. But at the same time, you still can't force two people to grow up and like each other. That's just not going to happen. Because puberty is unpredictable. I mean, it's predictable, but it does unpredictable stuff to you, you know? But, oh well. Luna, Harry and Luna was always a relationship I thought would have really worked out in the movies. But the movies make Luna uh, pair up with Neville. who A lot of us book fans who read the books, I felt that Neville and Luna would go right together. Because they're both pretty weird, you know? But I guess it just never worked, you know? Oh well. Let's see, what are we doing? Trying to find the classroom now? I'm trying to process a video here. I don't I don't know how long it's gonna take. Oh well. Alright, now we're gonna make paper planes. Because Harry rides on paper, get high like planes. If you catch him at the border, he got bees on his name. <laughs> you know that song from uh, Maya or MIA, I think. Alright. Gotta speak process. Is this video even processing or is it just burning through uh, heat and, and heating up my lap? I don't know. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, that's Cornelius Fudge. I was gonna process this before, but oh well. You know that that's definitely the longest long play. I'm trying to process a long play I did of Sonic Adventure DX. I'm sure the other long plays will be much shorter though. Alright, got it. I gave Neville his shovel, because you know he definitely needs a shovel because it's the dig. <laughs> like was shown in the movies. I don't remember. I don't recall him shoveling. But whatever, man, whatever. Huh? Alright, we gotta shoot that up. Hmm, what's going on? Oh yeah, I need to make a potion. Potion of some sort. This is basically the only type of learning we're having in this class for sure because, as you know, we can't do perform any magic because Umbridge restricts us. So we actually lose our magic and stuff. Alright, bring that paper down. Let's be Hermione. But yeah, I can't wait to start on my long plays of uh, Sonic Adventure DX. I had fun playing that. I will admit, I had fun. I don't understand the hate. Uh, that people started doing with the adventure games or Sonic Adventure in, in general, but we'll get to that when I actually do long play. I look, I'm gonna focus and talk about Harry Potter here. You know? All right, that's the cauldron. Oh, I need to get the ingredients, huh? I get that, and that, and we need that purple spider. Is this thing even processing? I said that several times. Huh? I'm gonna give it four minutes to see what happens, you know? But all right. Oh, no, I don't need that. That's just a character stud. Don't you hate it when you're playing a game and you forget what you did before? But I'm not gonna rescue that student. Shot him in his dick. 
All right, student Imperial. Imperial or Imperial. <laughs> I like it how in the first game they had Harry's head, bobblehead as like the uh, loading screen, the, the loading symbol, but in this game it's Voldemort's head. Okay, open the door, Ron. Nice. Start making paper planes, cause I fly like paper and get high like planes. like the bitch Umbridge banned us from using magic so we, here's what we lost we lost that we lost that we lost that and reducto so now all you can do is light your wand kind of like a flashlight you know you can use expecto patronum for some odd reason but oh well and um that's about it oh yeah and we're guarding leviosa but all the cool spells like reducto defendo you know any of the spells you learn aquamenti you won't be able to do and there's only three spells you learn in this game uh defendo uh aguamenti and um and you relearn reducto again and the uh, character specific spell or not character specific but the exclusive spell you learn is focus you know to uh, convey people's minds yeah you don't really learn much in here because harry ron and hermione are pretty much already knowledgeable in magic this game is mostly about dueling and preparing for the second wizarding war the ultimate battle between Harry and Voldemort. All that magical learning stuff and potion making, you should have already learned that in the first game, you know? So, yep. Alright, let's see what's up. Wait, what is that? Is that a cup? Not, that's a golf golf club? Why does he need a golf club? Wizards don't play golf. What the heck? Hey, who's that Tom Riddle looking dude, man? Let's get him. Oh yeah, you guys haven't noticed, and I should have mentioned this earlier, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, especially Ron and Hermione, have had a makeover, because now they're older now. Hermione has nicer hair, because she's a teenager, and Ron also got that nice Justin Bieber hair, shaggy hair, you know. But like, the Harry has changed a little bit, but not much. I I couldn't even tell you, the, it's very, maybe he just looks more serious. But Harry definitely had a little makeover in the Lego Dimensions. He basically have, has Ron's hair. Which makes me think Ron is not going to be a playable character in Lego Dimensions. Because only Harry and Voldemort. I really don't need Hermione and Ron because at the end of the day, they're all magical. I mean, at the end of the day, they're all magical. They all do perform the same magic. So the only ones that would be really different would be Harry and Voldemort. Or, you know, a Death Eater or something like that. So, yeah. But as for Sonic, I wish we had Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, Dr. Eggman. All we're going to have is Sonic in Lego Dimensions. I, I hope we have more, you know? But whatever. Okay, so what are we doing now? Uh, let's see. Are we going to Hogsmeade? Oh, yeah, we're trying to make Dumbledore's army. So we got to go to Hogsmeade. But yeah, if you guys haven't noticed, the loading screens are far shorter now. Like, I'm going to do less editing here, which is a good thing. And yeah, the bridge is now 3D, which is really just a transitional area. You really, there's nothing interactive here to do except interact with the lights, get a little bit more studs. That's about it. Anytime you see those sparkles, those are nargles. You can't access them until you unlock Luna's Spectra Specs, which is in the Half-Blood Prince, the year six. Oh, sorry. First, before we do Dumbledore's army, we got to tame them Destrals with Luna. And Hermione can't access her bag yet. Alright, Luna. The nature girl. Oh, 
Okay, so that Destro who wants us to feed him. Give him some food. So we gotta give all them chicken and fish. Fish and chicken. You know? This is also not a level, so let's let's do it. Yeah, the, the thing is with this game is the things that I play that aren't levels, I kind of forgot them. So I'm trying to remember, wait, well, what is it I did that first time I played the game, you know? Crazy. <laughs> but all right. Yeah, my laptop is burning, man, because it's like processing. I definitely can't wait to get a new laptop because I've overworked this. I've only had this one for like two years since early February in uh, 2014, but still. All right, I like the Thestrals. They look very scary, like they're skeletal and stuff. They're horses of death, but they're very friendly. Like, that's one thing I like about J.K. Rowling. Never judge a book by its cover. They're very peaceful sounding. They're friendly. I actually like the Thestrals more than Buckbeak, you know? But you know, it's funny how the Thestrals just became a thing, uh, like like the type of, you know, horse type flying winged horses transportation, in the Harry Potter movies and Hippogriffs were completely forgotten. You only saw them in Prison Azkaban. You never see them again, because the Thestrals were in Order of the Phoenix. They were also in uh, no Half the Prince was all about disapparating. I was apparating and stuff. Uh, the Thestrals were shown again in Deathly Hallows Part One when uh, you know. The seven potters, the seven potters were trying to fly from Little Wingjing, you know, Harry the Dursley's place. That's when you saw them. I can't remember when you see them again. I don't think you see them in the Battle of Hogwarts. No, you don't, you don't. So yeah, so you only see them in the fifth movie and you see them in uh, the beginning of the seventh movie. But I, I like the Thestrals. I, I think they're, I, I like them more than the Hippogriff. They're faster, you know, they're more agile, so I like them. I like that noise they make, it's like that woo noise. Very, you know, they're like docile, peaceful creatures. I think I said that already. Now I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> but yeah. I gotta make a bridge. I give the last Astro some chicken or some fish. I hate those gnomes, whatever they are, those mushroom things. Did, I forgot what they're called, mud kippings. Cause it's hard to attack them with my wand, and they they basically take in a lot of hits. Okay, let's slap that bird cause he's got the fish, which I didn't see. I'm like, wait, how did slap it? How did I thought the bird turned into a fish? <laughs> Failed. That's funny. They actually used some that Luna made, that line hat, which was in Half of Friends. But since there's absolutely no Quidditch in this game, you uh, see that early. I mean, you can go to the Quidditch pitch, but there's only like a little flying session where you can collect studs and stuff and um, character tokens. That's it. Quidditch is not absent in this game. Quidditch was never a thing in these games anyway, because in the first two uh, years, Quidditch, you're playing in the back scenes. You're playing as Harry. I mean, you're playing as Hermione, Ron, and Hagrid as they're trying to save Harry, you know? I remember they said that right from the get-go, back in E3 when they were advertising these games, they said that Quidditch would not be a thing in the LEGO games. The LEGO games are all about exploration, not about sport. So, I was totally fine with that. Because in the EA Harry Potter games, the Quidditch matches were just lame. Just gotta fly through a bunch of rings. I'm like, what is this? Superman 64? But yeah. Alright, looks like we're... Wait, do we have a class? The only class we have, I think is Aguamenti, I think. But Umbridge banned our magic, though. Oh, well. Let's see. What was here? Yeah, everything. The, the graphics look a lot better. The the stair... I feel like the Hogwarts is shorter, yet bigger. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, okay, what's next? Rebuilding Dumbledore's army, or what? I see this is like the first loading screen here, so that that's good. Wait, how many level? Oh, we still haven't done a second level yet. Wait, have we? I'm confused now. Have we done a level yet? 
I don't think so. I don't think we've done a level. Nah, I, I don't think so. Nope. We haven't done a level yet. We have not done a level. Yo, that uh, llama are just blazing. So we're here to build Dumbledore's army. So uh, just got to collect all the students. Our recruits are going to be Dean Thomas, Luna Love, Good, Neville Longbottom, and Joe Jane. Obviously, there are more. These are the main seven. And these are also the ones that aid us in our... Wait, actually, no, no, no. Because we have Luna, Neville, and Ginny. Ginny's not here. I kind of wish Dean Thomas went with Dumbledore's army to fight off the Death Eaters. Because he just does not do much in the movies, you know? At all. But oh well. We don't even see him in the Battle of Hogwarts. We just see him before when he's with Kingsley. And you kind of see him in the background when they're fighting the second time in the Great Hall. But that's about it, man. Alright. Okay, so. Gotta cross through that icicle bridge. And, uh, yeah. Gotta get past these gates. You know, I always wonder, why is it always snowing in Hogsmeade? I never understood. It's like, it can be summer, and you're in Hogsmeade, and it's snowing. That's because Hogsmeade's on the mountains. You know? And some it always snows in the mountains in some areas. So, yeah, that's why. Alright. Oh, I almost forgot to hold on to it. Now this thing is moving so slow, god dang. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Alright, uh, okay. Now what are we doing here? Nice. Okay, so Luna's gonna help pour some hot coffee on those icicles to melt it. I wonder if we can still go to Hogsmeade this game, because Hogsmeade looks different. Oh yeah, you actually can, I almost forgot, but yeah, Hogsmeade is different. It's made more like uh, the way it does in Half-Blood Prince, in uh, Order of the Phoenix. Right, the dog house. Ooh, let the dogs out. That's an old song, man, very old song. We're trying to put a, trying to put a dancing skeleton. Okay, so I need to give Neville his shovel again. I don't know why he keeps on losing it. I need to give Joe Jane some flowers because she's in love with Harry. And vice versa. Alright, um... Alright, that's Neville's shovel. Now, we can't apparate yet. Only Dumbledore can do that in uh, year six. And then Harry, people can start doing that in year seven or whatever. Kind of cool when you think about it. Like they don't dis like they don't start apparating until the, the, their final year when they're not in Hogwarts. This is very advanced magic. All right. All right now, time to give uh, Jo Jane her flower. Wait, what am I doing right now? Hmm, okay, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, brush up that. Come on, brush it up. Nice. I put that right there. Uh, did you see Hermione making that Avengers pose or Iron Man pose when she landed? And where's the flowers? Okay, the flowers are over there. 
Alright, Joe Jane, I hope you like, uh, you know, lesbian relationships because Hermione's gonna give you the flowers. Okay, this uh, laptop is heating up way too much. I gotta, gotta tone it down. I mean, this thing is processing, I guess, but dang, there has to be a way to tone this down. I should have, you know, cut it up in the parts. I should do that next time. Cause this laptop is very, very hot. All right. How to get into Hogsmeade, and that is Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth. But you don't really. The average movie movie goer does not know that in the fifth movie, Order of the Phoenix, because it's played by someone else, just a background character, but. Um, then they recast Aberforth for Deathly Hallows Part 2. So, yep. Alright. Now we're inside. We in the building! So, yeah. Alright, who wants an apple? Who wants an apple? Okay, that's not what I intended to do. Look at that Dementor. Only Harry can defeat it because the students haven't learned how to use Expecto Patronum yet. You know, I got a question. Since Draco Malfoy was never taught in Dumbledore's army, does he know how to do Patronus Charm? I'm gonna have to find that out when I play this game again. But all right. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Expected Patron does take a long time to, you know, to shoot because they're trying to do it with style, you know. I do that hand waving thing. Oh, this is a picture of Harry defeating the Basilisk. Nice. Very, very nice. All right, so Neville's got his feather. So, I, oh, okay, never mind. We do recruit seven students. Okay, we got Padma Patil, um, Parvati and Padma. Then we got Ginny. Wait, let's see. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We got Padma, Ginny, and um, who's the other one? Seamus Finnegan? No, not Seamus. Yeah, I, I don't know who it is. But we gave Voldemort to Ginny for some reason. Hmm. Alright, we complete this level, second level. Just gotta do one more level and I'm done for today. <laughs> These long plays are gonna kill me, man. requirements let's go find out you know by the way guys I never knew that Neville Longbottom had a gap teeth I mean it had a gap tooth you know um, uh, I didn't know that until they showed Lego Harry Potter I saw Lego Neville I'm like okay I know Lego Neville I know Neville supposed to have like buck teeth but I didn't know they had gap in them you know oh cuz okay in the uh, previous game Neville also has has uh, gotten older in uh, Lego Neville cuz in the first game uh, he just has buck teeth, you know. When this one, he has gap teeth, so that's that's funny. All right. 
Hey, let's get through. Okay, now we're going to the room of requirement. Straight ahead. This is a new location. It was not in years one or four. Come on, take me to it. Alright, time to attack these, uh, uh, these dummies, yeah. Alright, come on, come at me, bro, come at me. You won't win. You won't make it. Alright. Oh, nice. My friend is, is like, he's always so late in news. I, I was just talking with my class, uh, not classmates, I was talking with, uh, you know, my mates, my YouTube fam about, like, this dude who was trying to roast me or whatever on this, and we discussed about it and stuff, and now, like, because cause Dylan, or, uh, yeah, I'm mentioning you, Dylan, because, uh, you know, I think he's got work or whatever, so, like, he comes back hours later after we're done talking about it, he's like, dude, you just got roasted, it's like, I, I, I already knew that, you know? Yeah. Alright, so, um, looks like, uh, okay, we just got a gold brick here. Yeah. Okay, so right now we're going to uh, the, the next level, which I think is the third level or something. Yeah, yeah, the third level. That's going to be Aklumens or something. Yeah. So, alright. Yo, my teacher's like right next door. Yeah, you guys don't know. Uh, I actually, where I live, uh, my teachers are like, I got some classmates that live next to me. Because I live in a town home, so... Oh well, I keep the window wide open because I, I need I need air, man. I I need a I need to breathe. So, yeah. But all right, um, yeah. Okay, going through the steps now, and boy, am I sweating. Okay, now what? Okay, I think this is where Harry has his little dream. You know, um, about Arthur Weasley getting attacked and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
All right, so now we're in a black and white mine. Well, there's a lot of black and white levels in this game. I mean, in, in the Lego Harry Potter games. Because we're always going back in time, going in someone's mind, looking at memories and shit. So right now, uh, Voldemort, no, Voldemort, Snape is in Harry's mind, right? He's trying to teach Harry how to block out someone from invading your mind, you know? But, all right. And I'm just looking around, trying to find out things to do. Got I actually got to build a... What's, what do you call those things? Those construction things. A tractor. Yeah, the thing that you used to, to, to dig up sand. Yeah. I don't know anything about construction... You know, construction machines, you know? I know what they are, but I, I don't know what they call like I mean, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. See, if this was free play, I wouldn't even need to build that. Just be like Fang or, you know, Neville, use your shovel, dig it up. But wait, I got a question. Since we are playing a game about magic, can't Harry just conjure a shovel? I Do I really need to build a tractor? I mean, come on now. Oh, well. Hey, we gave Dudley his cake. Now let me go through. You fat boy. Oh, it's all dark and ominous. All right, so uh, right now we gotta invade, or we gotta go in Molly's mind and see what she wants. What does she want? She wants a doorknob, so we can get through the other door. That, that makes no sense, but oh well. All right. Only Snake can use the focus spell. Harry doesn't master until like in the end when he does it. But you know the weird thing? Harry can't really do that. He can't really go inside someone's mind. In the movie, he just used Protego to deflect Snape's um, legilimens on him. But Harry has never mastered how to go inside someone's mind because that's kind of sinister. You know, like why would he do that? So another thing that the game uh, uh, changes for the sake of the game, you know. But, all right. Oh, gotta attack that guy. I'm using my cell phone here, and it's not recepting uh, my microphone, so, so that's good. All right, Jojen, wait, what is she even doing in my mind? Oh, okay, this is before Harry kisses Joe, right? Okay, so right now we're in the Ministry of Magic, the atrium. I love this, man. It's... So dark and stuff. You know, I noticed David Yates, uh, the later movies he directed are very consistent in locations. Like how the Ministry of Magic is shown in the fifth movie and again in the uh, in the seventh movie. So yeah, I'm glad he's the one that continued directing up to that point. You know, I'm glad it wasn't a different director because they because they would have done their own thing. You know, they they would have done their own thing. All right, catch that paper plane. Ever get the feeling that someone is just like looking at you? Or just staring at you, it's like... Yeah, see, I try to save energy in my house by not, you know, not uh, using the air conditioner. So what I do is I, uh, I, um, I roll down the window so the cool air can come because I love that nice natural air, you know? Okay, this is the last one. In this one, I think all you do is just go forward. That's all you do, move forward until you see Voldemort. I didn't know that though, I thought you had to do something, I forgot. Because that's what I usually do in this level. I try to, you know, to 100% to it and stuff. And that lady just standing next to her car like a weirdo. Wait, let me see. All right, we beat the, uh, what's this, the third level? Yeah, we beat the third level, so, uh, all right, that's, uh, that's nice. 
Very nice. All right, let's continue. So it looks like right now I'm headed back to Hogwarts. Or not to Hogwarts. I I am in Hogwarts. What am I talking about? I'm, uh, you know, it's Christmas break, so I'm headed back to Grimold Place. Grimold Place. I don't know if it's Grimold Place or Grimold Place. They pronounced it Grimold in the, the movies. You know, thanks to the movies, they helped me pronounce a lot of the, the terms right in the Harry Potter universe. Because I was mispronouncing everything. Remember back then when we used to call Hermione Hermione? Or Her Her Hermione 1? <laughs> I remember. Like that, I'm talking about like the 90s, the late 90s when the books came out. And like 2000, but before the movie came out. I started calling her Hermione after I heard the movie version, like 2000. And I didn't watch until the summer of 2002. But before that, I was calling her H Hermione. Hermione. All right, Defendo. Time to learn Defendo. Now, this is one of only two lessons you learn in charms class because we've already mastered most of the charms. So, Defendo is basically a Lego specific spell you know it helps you cut into like you know trace into walls kind of like in the uh, other lego games like how S superman you know how superman uses laser vision and stuff now defendo's an actual spell in the harry potter universe though defendo's supposed to break through things like tough glass breaking through like bricks that's what defendo is for so in the lego games they just use defendo to trace through things you know implementing their lego mechanics in it but yeah because he he like Harry doesn't use Defendo until his sixth year. You know, when he's trying to, uh... No, 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 no. He doesn't use Defendo until the seventh movie. Deathly Hallows Part 1, when he's trying to break through the ice to retrieve uh, God's or Gryffindor's sword. And since this is technically their last year in Hogwarts, might as well teach them Defendo. How to use Defendo. That's like the last charm they learn. No, actually, the last one they learn is Aguamenti. The water spell. For some reason, they don't learn a fire spell, but whatever. I'm not talking about fiend fire. Alright, time to build some steps. Wait, is that the second one? Okay, so now we need to build something else, a fish. We build, uh, I think a plane or whatever. We build stairs, now we gotta build the fish. I like it how the classroom setting still hasn't changed since years one or four. That's consistency right there. Alright, we gotta use Defendo. Now, Defendo is the only spell that you have to switch to before you can use it on a wall. I mean, you can highlight it, it's context sensitive, but you still have to change to Defendo if you want to actually trace. So basically, Harry Potter, the spells here basically trump all the other characters. And I hope Lego Dimensions do that. Please, I, I mean, I'm, I can't ask them to listen to me because they've already, you know, like, finished the team packs. You know, it's coming out. They're going to manufacture it. And uh, basically this month, it's September 1st that I'm recording this part. So um, I hope that both Harry Potter and Voldemort have all their spells. Like, Harry should be able to, you know, uh, penetrate golden objects and, you know, and trace it. He should be able to, um, he should also be able to break through silver objects using Reducto, you know, he should be able to light things, you know, he should be able to do a lot of things with magic. I, I, like, I don't want to see any limitations. I would be mad if they showed any limitations, because he has magic, he can do e anything, basically, you know, he can also apparate. I want to see a fully masterful harry potter and lego dimensions i want to see him with his powers i want to see that wheel with the spells i want to see everything you know but that might be too much to ask for uh you know traveler's tales and the whole point of lego dimensions is to interact with other characters so if harry potter can do everything then there's no point in having this character or that character but still i mean technically he's a wizard so he should be able to do that otherwise that means he's incompetent all right, or maybe like they'll be like, "Oh, you can trace through things, but only if it's red." I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how they implement all the new characters for Lego Dimensions Year Two. 
But I gotta say, if that wasn't orgasmic seeing Harry run through Green Hill Zone, I don't know what is. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. This is when I'm starting to fall asleep recording. You, you, you see what Ron is doing? Look like he's trying to run into glitch into that wall. No, that's just me falling asleep a bit. So I, I didn't know what I was pressing. Yeah, I kept that in because I was like, I don't know why I was falling asleep, though. That that was weird. But I was recording this past midnight. So, you know, words are wise. Never record, you know, post com videos past midnight especially if it's a long play okay let's follow nearly headless nick you know it's actually a headless ghost that we have to follow in leaky cauldron and diagon alley and stuff but in hogwarts is actually nearly headless nick or with his head on so that that's pretty cool the heck wh why are they trying to shut me out that's kind of rude i gotta use the fin though the ghost didn't have to use that just phased right through. He didn't even have to phase through. Alright, but this is fun to use, so. Okay, you don't have to build it, but I'm going to build a Hogwarts Choo Choo Train. This is also going to be a Lego minifigure for Lego Dimensions. Uh, the team pack is Harry, Voldemort, uh, Hogwarts Express, and the flying car, the Ford Anglia. So that will be interesting. Now, th this is actually the one time I don't care about playing as Hermione or Ron, because they're all the same. Just give me Harry and Voldemort. Maybe Dumbledore, but eh, I don't know. Like I don't think they're going to do Dumbledore because he's basically the same as Gandalf a bit. And they don't want to do that. They want variety. So I think it will just be Harry and Voldemort. Now, obviously, this was not in the movie or the book. <laughs> they had to make Creature useful somehow. Like, like Creature's not useful in this game at all. He's just a mischievous elf. Like, I, I thought we were going to see him again in Deathly House Part 1, like we did in the movie. But, nope, we don't. But how awesome was that to see both Dobby and Creature in the same room? That was awesome. I didn't think they would do that because they've been ignoring Dobby since after the second movie. But to see Dobby and Creature, that was fun. And to see how different they were. Like, Creature was the darker elf that fit the tone of the later Harry Potter movies. And here's Dobby, who fits the, the more kitty uh, tone of the early movies. So to, to see them both was kind of weird. And, and, and funny, I, I like the, uh, the dissonance their characters had, you know? Alright, let's put that doorknob in so we can get through. See, look, I'm sleeping again. What the heck? What the heck, Harry? Put that thing in. I almost said put that shit in whatever, but I gotta be careful how I talk, ladies and gentlemen, because YouTube, their terms of service now, they're gonna demonetize this video. Not that I really care, though, because like I said, I'm not doing these long plays for the views or the money. I'm doing it because I'm a Harry Potter fan, and I've always wanted to do this on my channel, so it's one of those exceptions which I don't care. Same thing as Sonic Adventure DX. You know, I kind of want more views when I do that one, because that's Sonic, but oh well. Now, when I do Lego Dimensions and Sonic Bloom Fire and Ice, I definitely got to watch my language there because I want views on that one. You know, got to pay my bills, you know. <laughs> but all right, we can't get through this late. And here am I falling asleep again. See, look, I go through her once and I do it again. I take it off because I'm a moron. See, t look, 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 look. I'm sleeping here. I, I'm, I'm just like, dude. So I actually pause the game at some point and drink some coffee because I'm like, nah, I can't be recording this and sleeping. What the heck, man? 
See, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do anymore because I'm just out of it, you know? I almost forgot I can't use Reduct, though, anymore. Wait, I forgot. Does Professor Flitwick teach us how to use Reducto again? Because that means that he teaches us three charms then. Reducto, uh, Defendo, and uh, Aguamenti. All right, and I go downstairs. See, look at what I'm doing. I'm sneaky sneaking. I'm sleeping again. God dang it. This is embarrassing gameplay. Because you're seeing me sleep. Never play games when you got to sleep, guys. But I had to record this. Also, I'm having problems trying to process the video I did. Because when I was recording Sonic Adventure DX, I didn't know it would be that long. I thought Sonic Story was going to be short. I didn't know it was going to have like 10 levels. So I actually recorded about 2 hours and 38 minutes of it. It's definitely going to be have to split. It's going to, definitely going to be having to be split in two parts. So that's like over 13 gigabytes. And it just cannot process my Elgato. So I'm having technical difficulties with it. So please bear with me guys, you won't see it this week, you I don't. You won't even see it next week. I don't think you'll be seeing it for a while, you know, so because I gotta get it to work. Let me just focus on the Lego Harry Potter and finishing that, and then I can do that, you know. I just don't want Sonic Boom Fire and Ice to be my first Sonic game I do this year, you know. Alright, Creature. Now, Creature was mean in the movie, right? But he was nowhere near as rude, condescending, and vile as he was in the book. God, I hated Creature in the book. Like, J.K. Rowling really knows how to make you hate characters. Like, Creature, I just wanted to stab him. Like, I'm like, serious? I don't know why you haven't killed this elf yet, you know? Like, if you thought, if Dobby was like your Jar Jar Binks, but friendly and fun, Creature was the exact opposite. He was racist. He was evil. And it's funny, though, because he was a lowly, considered a lowly elf, too. But, you know, I like it how Harry sympathized with him because he's like, this guy is an elf. He's been subject. It's like a dog. Think about it like a dog. If someone, like, if a dog is evil or even like these policemen when they let their dogs maul you or attack you, it's not the dog's fault. It's the owner's fault. The owner is the one who trains the dog. The dog is just doing what he's told or what he's learned to do. Same thing as Creature. Like, Creature has been learned to hate muggles and muggleborns and, you know, mudbloods or whatever. So, of course, he's going to show, like, those racist, you know, uh, remarks and intentions because that's how he was raised. He's just trying to please his masters. But, yeah, but in the fifth book, Order of the Phoenix, I hated his guts. Did not like him. I don't think we saw him in Half Blood Prince. Well, uh, we, now I don't think we saw him. We definitely saw him again in Deathly Hallows, though. We beat the level and Bellatrix has escaped. What are we gonna do? She's that, yeah. More on Bellatrix later. <laughs> hmm. All right. By the way, I love the newspaper montage that David Yates did in the Order of the Phoenix, you know. It really condensed that whole big book because that book needed to be condensed, you know. 
But yeah, <laughs> the longest book was the shortest movie. No, no, no. The, the shortest movie is uh, Deathly Hallows Part 2, you know. But still, I count that as one with Deathly Hallows. So the shortest solo movie is still Order of the Phoenix. So. Yeah, but Bellatrix, man. Bellatrix is strange. She's a piece of work, man. She's a real piece of work. Oh, we just rescued a student. On accident. Well, actually, I did that on purpose. Only took like one second, so. All right, now we're going to teach, Harry's going to teach the students how to use Expecto Patronum. Hmm. 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 All right. Now I love this scene, man, because it was just it like it's one of the best scenes like I love in Order of the Phoenix and just the Harry Potter series in general. I think it even made top mojos uh top ten or whatever. Well, I forgot what they're called. Mojo something. Mojo list, whatever. <laughs> My bad for screwing that up. But yeah, like cause it was just amazing seeing Harry having to learn how to use Expecto Protronum back in the third movie, the third book, Prison Azkaban. He had to master that. And he did, and now he's passing it on to the students. It was just it was really cool. It's like, you know, my father like son, like teacher, like student becomes teacher moment. Wait, why did I say like father like son? My bad. But all right, I almost forgot that Ginny Weasley, she has a pet. It's a little pink uh, pygmy puff called Arnold. But she doesn't get him until like the half blood prince. But whatever. Screw consistency. This is a Lego game. But yo, have you seen Harry Potter's uh, a Patronus charm in the, the Lego Dimensions? It is badass, fam. Badass. Like he, like the, the horse comes out of it. Like the the Patronus charm looks way better than it does in his his own games. You know, like it, like the Patronus here is not as good as the Patronus they show in Lego Dimensions. Like his spells look upgraded. They look awesome. So, all right, let's be run now. Got to use the Patronus. We can't spam it with the same character, I think. All right, gotta turn that thing. I gotta use Patronus for that. Okay, so now I get this Patronus. Oh, I actually gotta. Gotta use it with Hermione now. Now, I forgot what everyone's Patronus was in the movie. Okay, Ron's was a dog. Uh, I forgot what Neville... No, I, I remember Neville Longbottom. He was the only one that couldn't do it. Uh, Hermione's was a weasel. Because, you know, Ron. And uh, what, what else? And, and, and yeah, Luna Lovegood's was a rabbit. Yep. Oh, yeah, and Ginny Weasley's was a horse. Pretty cool, yeah. All right, but yeah, those were the only animals they showed. I remember because when, when Ginny used the horse, and Harry's like, "Fantastic, Ginny!" So yeah, so they basically only showed the people who were going to, you know, who were going to matter in the climax, who were actually going to fight with the Death Eaters. Those were the only ones they showed Patronus's charm, Patronus charms with. Wait, what am I talking about? I'm mixing up words. Those were the only people they showed their Patronus charms, except Neville Longbottom. All right, we mastered Patronus charms. I don't think we used Neville, did we? Hmm. Well, that's kind of uh, incorrect and accurate because he didn't actually... He was the only one that didn't... Uh, wasn't able to perform it. All 
right, so Dumbledore has left. He has fled Hogwarts and is on the run. So right now, Umbridge controls the school. She is the new headmaster or headmistress. You know, I almost forgot that she actually was headmistress. We actually did have a different headmaster than Dumbledore. But only for like, what? Only for like a few weeks? A few months or something? So, yeah. Kind of funny. And what is this car doing? She's like trying to turn in or something. But all right. So what now? The thing we're going to do now. Oh, Grop. Grop the giant. Yeah, that, that this was one scene that I felt was kind of, uh, kind of had to happen, but it kind of dragged out the plot. The Grop thing. I know they need a Grop because he was the one that was going to, you know, dispose of Umbridge. But yeah, it was nice. But it's like we don't see Grop ever again. So it was just one of those plot points that had to happen. But it kind of dragged, you know. All right, gotta go to Hagrid's hut. Hey. Huh? 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 Hmm. <laughs> oh. Huh. Uh -huh. All right, so it looks like the centaurs uh, prevented passage to the Forbidden Forest. You know, I have to give credit to where it's due. Traverse Tales did the best they could to communicate the plot of the game without dialogue. Because, you know, like, it's complicated what's going on with the Centaurs. You know, because the school is, uh, with Umbridge and the Ministry, is restricting their territory. So they're becoming more hostile, especially to humans. Now, obviously, you can't, you know, translate that well in the game. So, in the game, they're just like saying, oh, they blocked passage. You gotta find a way to get past, you know? Very uh, watered down and juvenile, but hey, it's a Lego game. But I do, I enjoy how they put dialogue because now Lego games have gotten a lot smarter and wittier. And that's what I like. That's what I want to see, you know. Yeah, okay. This is not a level, actually. This is, uh, so I'm trying to remember what to do. There's a lot of non-levels in this game. Or drags out the game because if I only played the six levels, I'd be done with this in less than 30 minutes, less than an hour, you know. But you basically got a whole hour of padding and you know, uh, roaming through the castles and stuff, roaming through the six. Yo, by the way, I cannot wait until we're done. This election is over. This election is so annoying. I always seeing Donald Trump everywhere. Alright, so right now we need to save Hermione from Grop. Grop the giant. Hagrid has shown very little in this game, you know, like, uh, he only makes, uh, this is his first appearance in Order of the Phoenix, and he only makes one more appearance in Half-Blood Prince, and you don't see him in Deathly Hallows Part 1, and then you see him towards the end of Deathly Hallows Part 2, so, yeah, you barely see Hagrid much in this game, because he's not that big of a character anymore, even in the movies and the books. Um, he has a much more bigger, uh, presence in the, uh, first, in the first, uh, game, you know. Years one to four, especially years one, since he's the one that introduced Harry to the magical world, you know, and also year two and year three when he's a teacher. But yeah, starting with Goblet of Fire, his part starts getting uh, a bit minimized, you know. All right, looks like we need a rubber ducky now. 
Rubber Ducky, you're the one. You make singing lots of fun. <laughs> you guys know that song, right? That was a Rubber Ducky song from Ernie and Sesame Street. Forgot the rest of the lyrics. Like, Rubber Ducky, there's no one I'd rather spend time with than you. I forgot. Anyway, I'll stop singing. Okay, now he wants an accordion. Alright, please don't write again. Please don't write it. Of course I wanted to write it again. Wait, let, let me see. Let me see if I actually jump on it. Nope, I don't. Yes, I have self-control. Alright. Let's play that accordion. Alright, Grop befriended. Alright, uh, <laughs> I don't even care about the gold bricks. We're back in Hogwarts. You know, I might uh, show you guys how that Quidditch pitch is, just so you guys can look at it. You know, I don't ever have to go there throughout the whole game, but I might do it in Half-Blood Prince, depending on how long it is. We'll see. If the game, I mean, if the uh, long play is over two hours, I'll just cut it out. Because I hope the other years are less than two hours. Like, this one was a bit long. It was like two hours, ten minutes before. So I think I just cut it down by like four to five minutes. I definitely cut off the credits, though. I didn't want the credits to play too long. All right, nearly headless Nick. Doesn't even look nearly headless, but I said that enough. I mean, like, like if they make if like if they animated his head to go lopsided, and you know, going sideways like it does in the movies, that would have been, you know, I would have liked that. But, all right, so what are we doing right now? Well, I think right now. Yeah, right now we gotta take our owls, our owl exams, ordinary wizarding levels. No, 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 I'm going too ahead of myself. Snape has to teach us legitimacy again. So, yep, yeah, that's an actual, no, that that's actually not a level. So, uh, we got two more levels, though, but, uh, what am I doing here? I know I'm not sleeping anymore, because this is when I've already had my coffee. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go back and see that worked. Yep, me going off task as usual. Okay, so... We gotta give Snape a golf club again. I don't know what's up with these people in golf clubs. No one plays golf in this movie. Alright, here's your golf club. I don't know why you need it, but... I won't ask questions. So, in this game, Harry's able to use legitimacy on Snape. But, you know, the game kind of changes things. In the movies and the books, Harry's supposed to learn occlumency, which is to block people from penetrating your mind, from uh, possessing your mind. Legitimacy is the art of possessing people, which is actually kind of dark. You know, it's not like in Star Wars, where you can use Jedi mind tricks. In the games, I mean, in the Harry Potter universe, it's dark. But in this game, Harry learns how to use legitimacy. And then you kind of think, wait, is Snape trying to teach Harry that? I don't know. So the game changes things, but that's kind of like dark magic. So 
because I only hear Dark Wizards using that or Voldemort. Now, uh, you guys are like, what is the difference between Legilimens and Imperio? Imperio is when you make someone do your bidding. You're possessing them to do what you want them to do. Uh, that's an unforgivable curse. Legilimens is when you penetrate their mind, reading their thoughts. You know, like if someone is lying to you, instead of giving them Veritas Serum, you just penetrate their mind and basically unlock whatever they have. So they give you what you want them to give you, basically. So it's different. You're reading their mind. Kind of like what Voldemort did to uh, Grigorovich in uh, Deathly Hallows Part 1. Alright, let's chase uh, Snape, Severus Snape. James Potter was a bully, man. Who would have thought that Harry's father would be a bully? You think it'll be like Draco's dad, Lucius Malfoy, or something? But I, I, I loved how it was, you know. And then Snape, uh, he turned out to be a Death Eater. But his love for Lily is what kept him, you know, on the good side. All right, looks like we're gonna have to transform Sirius Black into a dog, so he can dig up this. And we don't have Peter Pettigrew, even though Peter Pettigrew made up the Marauders. Oh well, he's evil, so he kind of tagged along. Right now we're just playing a Sirius Ramus a Lupin, a Sirius Black Ramus Lupin and James Potter. So, all right. I use the scissors, chop down Snape. All right, Snape, you want to fight? You versus Harry. Oh no, nope, never mind. This is a uh, Sirius Black. Looks like I get hit here a lot because I don't think any of the Marauders know how to focus. Use the focus spell, the Gillimans. Oh, nice. I love the uh, the wand dueling aspect of this game. You know, I always loved it. Alright, nice. Why are these students laughing at us? Like, what? Alright, use Reducto. Yo, Ginny's Reducto was powerful in the movie, you know? Her reducto was powerful in the movie. It's basically what set everything off and uh, destroyed the whole Hall of Prophecies, you know? <laughs> that was funny. Alright. You know, these fights go on longer if you don't have all the spells you need, and only a few can use the gentlemen's. Okay, Harry was pretty much a dick in this game. Like, you know, he acted like a dick. In the movie and in the books, he was sorry when he saw Snape's memories. And he was like, I can't believe my dad was a bully. But in this game, Harry's like, ah -ha. He's like, see you later, Snape, you loser. You know, <laughs> so much different from the uh, source material. But all right, we've learned this now. Now it's time for, I think, Fred and George to do their mischief and uh, crash Umbridge's owl examinations. Man, I got like 30 minutes left here. So we'll see what I can do. I, I got to finish this though. Then I got to study for my exam. I love Fred and George Weasley. So mischievous. That's why I was really bummed and sad when Fred died, you know? Because Fred was always like the instigator, the one who caused everything, and George was kind of like the follower. I, I wonder who was older, though. I wonder if it was Fred who was older than George. I mean, you know, even though you're twins, one will still be older than the other by a few minutes, you know? So it really don't make sense. You're still considered twins, but, you know... 
Like, I, you know, I've seen a lot of twins identical and fraternal. And they're like, oh, I'm the oldest, so I get to... It's like, bro, please. Like, you got, you're literally just minutes or seconds older than your sibling. That doesn't make you more knowledgeable because you came out of your mother's womb before the other one. You know, it's weird, you know. But hey, I'm not a twin, so I don't understand the whole deal of it. I mean, do I ever wish I had a twin? Eh, nope. I wish I had a brother. I only have a sister, but I do not want to have a twin. Well, it looks like we gotta make a potion here. Okay. What do we gotta do here? Alright, make that. Man, I'm so hungry, man. I didn't eat anything. I just drank coffee, so I'm kind of ugh, kind of exhausted here. But we're almost done with this, fam. We're almost done. All right, now let's get strong. And I actually take the invisibility potion. You actually don't need that at all in the games. But whatever. Okay, now we can pull that apart. Alright, let's climb up. Now, this is the first time we're using uh, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, I think. And after this, like, this is the beginning of their shop. Because after this year and the next year, you know, because cause since they graduated and don't go to Hogwarts anymore, they run a joke shop called Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Yeah, since I made myself invisible, that actually lasts for the whole of this uh, section, you know. I don't turn back to normal. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay. All right, now we're climbing up. Oh, look, a spare gold brick. Nice. 17 gold bricks. That's good, that's good. Yeah, there's actually a lot of uh, 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 spells, not spells, but pranks and jinxes that Fred and George used that were not shown in the movie. Like the swamp, I forgot what this is called, but it's a swamp that, you know, can sink anything. It can even sink like giants, like uh, trolls and stuff. You don't see that until Deathly Hallows Part 2. Alright, so it looks like we got to make a firework. But we're not going on a trip in our favorite rocket ship. All right. <laughs> I still don't know who sang that song. I'm going to have to look it up. I first heard it, I think, last year. All right, we just need one more of those so we can... Okay, never mind. Let's pull it down. I remember playing this a lot in the PSP version. All right, nice. Oh, what is this? An Arc Industries uh, truck coming my way. He's trying to build this rocket. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, yo, I think I jinxed myself. I was saying how I fell asleep when I was recording this game. Now I'm falling asleep here. Yo, man, what is my luck? I'm going to have to, like, stretch out, stretch out a bit before I do the next level. Well, we're almost done with this. We just need one more part. Then we build the... Uh, the uh what do you call it we we'll call it the uh the rocket i just gotta put that last part in i faintly remember this though in the handheld version i'm definitely going to play the handheld version again i want to play it before sonic boom fire and ice comes out
Okay, so we've unlocked Weasley's boxes, the Weasley boxes. And not only Fred and George can unlock it, all Weasleys can unlock it. Okay, wait a second, was that an actual level? Whatever, I actually don't see it. So let's just continue moving on forward. I forgot, okay, so 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 how many levels have I done? Okay, I did the Christmas level. Oh yeah, yeah, I haven't done any levels yet. Alright. So the next level is going to be the Forbidden Forest. I knew it! Alright, is that a uh, Flitwick? So you're going to teach us how to use Aguamenti? Alright, now we're in Professor Umbridge's horrible, bedazzled, ugh. Two pink room. Uh, this is the uh, the Defense Against the Dark Arts uh, teacher's office, and she messes up. You know, one thing I love, um, every Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher personalizes their office. I mean, you see this in... Uh, you actually see it in the special features of the Sorcerer's Stone DVD. You see it in Lockhart's uh, office. You see that in the movie and on the DVD. You don't really see it in Loop. No, you actually do see it in Lupin. And you also see it in the special DVD. I don't know about Mad Eye Moody. Yeah, you also see Mad Eye Moody in Umbridge. So every uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, you see how they personalize their classroom and their office. You don't see Snape's Stone Half Blood Prince because, I mean, they don't show him at all. Um. Uh, in defense against the dark arts but in the book in the book uh you know jake heron explained snape's office saying that he made it exactly like the dungeon is all dark and dingy because you know the uh the potions class has always been dark and dinky until uh slughorn started using it when slughorn used it it was much brighter so i i love that you know all right we have to connect these plates so the cats can uh walk through them and communicate with each other it's kind of cool. You wonder, are these cats real? Or are they like fake cats? Or are they picture cats come alive that communicate with each other? Who knows? All right, I love this. Like, like this is when the movie gets good, cause that's when Umbridge, you know, holds uh, Harry and Hermione hostage, and they have to go to the Forbidden Forest to show her Dumbledore's secret weapon. 
I, I love this scene and I like the centaurs. You know, I wish that there was more centaurs in the movies. And I really thought the centaurs were going to be in um, the Battle of Hogwarts. But they're actually not. In the books, they refused to, to join the humans in, in their war. You know, So the movies were consistent with that. But I, I, I just love seeing the centaurs here. I wish we saw more of them. We only see them in the first movie and the fifth movie. And they look really different in the fifth movie. They made them look exactly like horses, you know. That's one thing I love about the, the Harry Potter movies. They make every creature organic, you know. Like a mermaid looks like a fish. You know, they don't look like a beautiful human being and with a fish body, you know. Same thing as a centaur. A, a, a centaur does not look like a human's torso attached on a horse's body. It actually looks like a humanoid horse. You know, so I love that. It makes the Harry Potter movies feel more natural and organic. Because, like, the mermaids, the mer people in the Harry Potter movies, in the Harry Potter world, do not look cute. They are not sexy or sexual. They look like fish. You know? Alright. Man, I don't know why I'm just feeling exhausted, man. I'm going to have to eat. The moment I'm done recording this, I am eating. Because I got an exam after this. There's no way... I can take an exam feeling like this, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely going to eat. Good thing I brought some uh, noodles with me. Ramen noodles, man. 90%. Uh, I mean, 10% noodles, 90% love. <laughs> you feel me? That's the struggle. Well, Alright, we can't use the platforms like I said before because her mind doesn't have her bag yet. The, the bag has an extension charm, I think. Undetectable extension charm, I forgot. But yeah. Looks like I got less than 15 minutes left to record this. Alright, come on, Crookshanks. Oh, oops. What am I supposed to do again? Man, I hate it when I forget. And this is an actual level, so I'm actually mad at myself that I forgot something. An actual level. I, I hope I don't forget half the prints now. <laughs> you know? But hey, I stood on that platform. I guess I'll just use it to uh, platform all the way to the top. Alright. Crookshanks. Hermione has Crookshanks from his her third year Prism Azkaban. All the way, wait, no, Hermione doesn't bring Crookshanks with her in Deathly Hallows, right? I don't remember seeing Crookshanks. Hmm. No, no, she doesn't have Crookshanks at all. Like, like basically, all of them leave their pets, Uh, you know, they let their pets go. Because that would just be inhumane and cruel to have their pets tag along with them. But unfortunately, Hedwig still died in the movie, just like in the book. But yeah, uh, by right, I don't think Hermione's supposed to have Crookshanks at all in Deathly Hallows. I'll see. I'll see if she has Crookshanks. She shouldn't have Crookshanks, and Ron shouldn't have Pigwidgeon. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, man, my bad, guys. I am falling asleep here. This is the second time I'm falling asleep during a playthrough. First time was Chamber of Secrets. What is wrong with me? Uh, next time I'm gonna make sure I eat before I do something like this. I should have ate first, you know. Oh well, we're almost done with this. Okay, so now we gotta rescue. Uh, well, we're not rescuing Umbridge, we're leading Grop to Umbridge to deal with her. Alright. I hope no dragonfly flies in here. I will be pissed, you know? 
All right, looks like I gotta just basically blast a few places to build the bike. All right, what am I doing? <laughs> Man, but I've been doing nothing but long plays, man. It's going to be nice to do short games again, short levels. What was I thinking doing a bunch of long plays? <laughs> oh, well. I just want to get this over with. I don't want to make this in the parts, you know? All right, let's build this bird. Also, doing long plays will definitely help me, you know, improve on my commentary. So then when I, I can actually mass upload LEGO Dimensions and Sonic Boom, you know? Are there any other games I'm planning on getting? Yep, Skylanders. Imi imitators. <laughs> Skylanders Imaginators. I definitely want to get the Crash Bandicoot pack. The bug has bitten me. I want to play as Crash, you know? I will definitely have enough money to get that. The starter pack, I think the Crash specific starter pack is um, $75. So it's actually cheaper than it was for me to buy the starter pack in LEGO Dimensions. So yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. I've never played Crash on my channel, so I'm going to see how that does. I'm interested in playing Crash, but I want to wait until we get the remasters first. You know, I hope the remasters aren't PS4 exclusive, but they most likely will be, you know. Alright. But yeah, if that does well, the Skylanders on my channel, I will definitely play Crash Bandicoot 2. Cause that's the game I grew up with, you know? Okay, time to leave that to grab and awake him. Oh, and of course I'm stuck. Okay. Wakey, wakey, grop. Yeah, man, and speaking of wakey, let me speak for myself, because I need to wake up, too. But I like it how they put the, uh, the, you know, the glowy parts where, you know, you have to ride your bike in the ring. So I know exactly where to go. Alright, Grob, do your thing. Okay, you're dead meat, Umbridge. So, we're going to uh, meet Luna so we can uh, ride the Thestrals. And speaking of that, where is my uh, cell phone, man? I'm, I'm looking for that, my smartphone. I just had it. Looks like I cannot find it, guys. Because I'm wondering what's generating that sound. Eh, whatever. Hmm. 
Yeah, I love how the light effect looks. But alright, I'm zooming through this Hall of Prophecies because I got no time to waste. Uh, looks like I'll be done this level in about six minutes, so let's hurry up. I just gotta mix in these uh, color coded crystal balls, making a blowing up potion so we can get past there. I love the AI in uh, Lego games. That's why I was a uh, bum with uh, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. The game is fun to play with other people online or whatever, but it is unplayable when you do solo. You know, it's unplayable in single mode because there's no AI. So we have to control all the characters like chess pieces. It's it's awful, you know. Oh yeah, I'm trying to, to look for the third part. The third ingredient is always the uh, the most hardest one to look for. It's always the worst. But that's actually in the beginning, so having to backtrack now. Alright, let's move that. Alright, it's definitely the third one. Which is actually the first one, but whatever. I guess we have to do all of them. <clears throat> okay, now time to blow up. Alright. Hmm. Ooh. Huh? Uh. Alright, run, Harry, run! Now, this is a chase sequence, but if there's actually some collectibles to get here. But, of course, I'm just going to run through everything, man. Running through the six with my woes because I don't need to collect anything. I'm speed running this, and this is as fast as he can go. Don't worry, Harry, you'll be running a much faster, a lot faster in LEGO Dimensions. Green Hill. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I love this scene in the movie. Now, some people are mad at the purest because in the book, they went through several rooms. But, oh well. You know, it is what it is. This whole scene was CGI, though. Lucius broke the crystal ball, the prophecy. But here, like, but here is my problem. What's the point of the crystal ball? Because like, Voldemort doesn't even need to know. He doesn't care. He still wants to kill Harry. He's the one that made Harry his equal and his rival. So the crystal ball, all it does is confirm that. Like, did he really need the confirmation? I mean, he heard the, the prophecy before, right? That's the main reason why he went to kill Harry. So I never understand it, a uh, baby Harry. So that's why I never understood why he needed the prophecy again. You know, he's like, I need that prophecy. I'm going to have to look it up again because the only person who needed to know was Harry. Maybe Voldemort needed verification on if Harry was his true rival. But I, I don't I don't really know. It's kind of weird when I think about it. But all right. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to Google that. I think he just needed verification to make sure that Harry was his rival. But I think after, you know, having Harry defeat you several times and coming back through his blood, you'd know that that is your rival. So, I mean, I don't know. All right, looks like we're going to fight now. White Knight. All right, time to fight either Bellatrix or Lucius Malfoy. You can choose which one. I'm fine Lucius Mal Malfoy because he's a punk ass. Punk ass bitch. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't get bleeped out by YouTube. All right. 
I mean, look at Harry finding Bellatrix there. We can't fight Bellatrix. She's the one that kills us. I'm just following the books, man. I'm following the books and the movies. All right, Reducto. All right, connect. I also hope the fighting mechanics for the uh, Harry and Voldemort is a bit better in Lego Dimensions. I mean, it, it, it was good in this one, but, you know, it, it's a little bit monotonous because you just use patterns and you lock on and have a wand clash. Kind of like a Priori and Cantatum. Final match. Now this is when things get epic. And actually Harry can take part and fight Voldemort too. He's just not there. I mean, you know, it's not like in the movie or the books where he's just sitting there. No, no, the movie's kind of annoying because he wanted a fight and was getting in Dumbledore's way. Dumbledore had to knock him back. It's like, come on, Harry. It's not your time to fight. But when Harry actually did fight Voldemort in the last movie, their, their fighting was not as... Uh, spectacular as Dumbledore and Voldemort but hey you know I wasn't expecting that there was no way Harry was going to you know beat Voldemort in skill alone you know it's only by convenience but all right uh we need to uh oh we gotta build something all right all right we made a little extinguisher there so right now we gotta douse it in water Man, but Dumbledore didn't need to do that in the movie. I don't know if he did that in the books. I mean, the book. Oh, I think it's too early. We gotta wait until he... Yep, now we do it. Because he's vulnerable now. He's vulnerable. Uh -huh. Douse that snake. I like it how they put the Goblet of Fire music. Because I was wondering, are, are, is, like, is this whole thing going to be without music like in the movie but no so there are some uh soundtracks taken from goblet of fire even though that's not in this game but, all right wand clash again i like it how voldemort is fire dumbledore is water wait what are death eaters doing here oh wow well. i guess it's just to keep the second player busy if two people are playing this all right i got that just for the heck of it bud from wizard gamot All right, time for Dumbledore Shield. Voldemort is going to throw a glass at me. You know, it's cool. I like it how the movies did. They, they said, like in the books, it was quite random. The spells they were using, and Voldemort used a snake and stuff. But in the movie, David Yates said he wanted the he wanted the battle to be a battle of elements. You know, like there's fire in it, there's water. Like the elements, there's four elements: fire, water, wind, and earth. There's fire, there's water, there's wind. And there's also Earth when, uh, Dum when Voldemort is throwing the uh, glass at Dumbledore. So it is a battle of the elements, you know? And Dumbledore turns it to sand. So I liked it. Sure, it wasn't like the book, but I loved it how it was element elemental, you know? Let's see how many hearts Voldemort has. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He has 8 hearts. He's down to 2 right now. All right, Harry, while Dumbledore is blocking the way, throw that at Voldemort's head. Nice. This fight is much better than the actual one, than the final one, you know, between Harry and Voldemort. All right. This fight is better than the Dumbledore versus Voldemort fight in the actual Harry Potter game. 
And yeah, I know that dude is going to post his uh, spam comment again saying that, hey, vote in the petition for the Harry Potter Steam. You know, I'm sure he's going to do that, but I just don't like the Harry Potter games in the on Steam. I mean, from EA. <laughs> Look at Ginny pining over Harry there. But all right, we defeated Voldemort. It will be back next time for Deathly Hallows Part Two. But all right, um, yeah, we've completed Order of the Phoenix. Finish story. Alright, we are done with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. But yeah, it was sad though that Sirius Black died and he was he died a fugitive. He wasn't proven innocent until after his death and like, oh, he never was the one that betrayed, you know, Harry's parents. So th that was pretty sad. But alright guys, that wraps it up. Uh, I think I might let this play. Actually, I don't. But thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for more. Remember, smash the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Join the Acer Army. And I think by the time I post this, I would have already hit over 17,000 subscribers. So thank you. Thank you all for that. But all right, guys, take care. And until next time, swag out.